My name is Itzik Altaman. Some people couldn't pronounce it, so we started as Ike Altaman. So now I've got to start telling you a few little things. As soon as the Germans occupied Poland, they started bringing laws out. They entered our town on the 17th of September 1939. We were made to walk around with an armband first. It was white with the blue star of David, though in other parts of the country they had yellow patches. Right from the beginning, all Jews, even kids, couldn't walk on the same side of the pavement if the Germans were coming. You crossed the road and walked on the other side. When you saw a soldier or an SS man, you had to bow and take your hat off. And if you didn't, you got a bloody good hiding. In April 1941, the Germans started to establish a ghetto. Our house was in the ghetto itself. We couldn't do any trading. No Jews could do any business. We had nothing to trade with, of course, and everything that was taken of us. Then they started with the Russians in the ghetto. In the morning, when the, the loaves of bread came, we were responsible for rationing them out of book because everything was on coolants. At least we knew we had some, sometimes an extra slice of bread or an extra loaf of bread. I remember that there weren't as many Jewish people left in the ghetto and rumors started from one little town to another. On the grapevine, that people were being sent away. Just before the Yom Tovim, we couldn't go to shul or anything like that. So we used to daven at home, or we had to get, get a few people from the neighborhood to daven quietly. One day in 1942, they said that all Jewish people must congregate in the town square. You could only bring with you what you could carry in your hand. Everything else you had to leave behind. Can you imagine before that people knew but couldn't comprehend the things that were happening? We all congregated in the square which was more or less five minutes walk from our house through the back. My father tried to hide a few of our things like the candlesticks and some suit length in the cellar or in the window ledge that was in the attic. We thought hopefully we would come back and we would know where to pick some of the things up. We didn't know what was going to happen. People were hiding precious stones and were having stuff sewn into their clothing in case we were sent to a camp. Then maybe we would have a few dollars or something like that to buy a bit of bread. I remember leaving my house. My mother had some, some gold dollars into a part of my coat made from cloth purchased by my father. He knew a lot of people who used to deal in cloth because he was on the Juden, Judenrat committee. Pinchel Hoffman's wife used to run a shop with a nice showcase on the front and sold cloth, ladies' dresses. My father had a three-quarter length winter coat made with a fair collar and had a high, 
high polished boots for the winter. My little brother and I had the same coats and caps made to keep us warm. They were beige with, with firm brown lines pinstripe on them. So we were all lined up in the square, standing there for hours and hours, and nothing was happening. I can see the square. I can see the police station as you came out and you turned left. If you went to a, a bit further, you could either go to the market or go to our street. Each line was about four or five deep and they came and they started counting the people. Then they came to us. I was standing behind my father and I was told to stay on my tiptoes to make me look a bit taller than I was. So there was my dad, my mother, my sister and my little brother and they came and they counted. And just between my father and my mother, they stopped. Their hand gestured, divided us. So my father and I were saved, and the rest were marched out through the square, just facing the police station in the middle of the town, and they turned left. My little brother was his, with his hands about his head and rifles on them, never to be seen again. We didn't know what they were going to do with the people. Everyone was so confused and fearful whether they were shot or died of starvation. starvation. I didn't know, but rumor had it that they were sent directly to Treblinka. I know what happened in Treblinka, just like in Auschwitz and Birkenau. They kept so many to work and the rest were herded right away to the crematoriums. And that is the last time I saw them. That was just around Yom Kippur time or soon after in October 1942. In 1944, I was transported from Blijin, my first concentration camp, and sent to Auschwitz. How I got there, I am not quite clear, maybe by train I forgot now what the time of the year it was. As a young boy, I had no idea. All I wanted was a little bit more food, so maybe I could stop the hunger. So I arrived in, at Auschwitz. It was already getting dark and they count, counted us and counted us again. We didn't enter the camp at Auschwitz but they decided to send us to Birkenau and we had to march about three kilometers from Auschwitz to Birkenau. Straight away, I can't remember the journey clearly because one day was much like the, the, the last. We were living from day to day. You didn't know what tomorrow was going to bring, or oh, for that matter, what might happen later in the day. What happened next at Birkenau, as, I far, as far as I call, can recall, is that we were put in quarantine block, Lager 1, Lager A. Unbeknown to me, my close friend, the late Sam Laskia, arrived there as well. And he, he says that they sent us to, uh, to shower. I remember that they cut, they cut all our hair off from everywhere. This part I also remember. They sprayed disinfectant or something on, on our bodies 
and it stung. Oh, it was terrible. It stung. The next morning we were lined up outside the barrack where we spent the night and they started to tattoo us. And they put B1209 on my left arm. That's across there. Most of us were shocked because we didn't know what was going on. We had seen some of the people on the transport being herded like cattle. The guards shouted, Rouse! 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 Out! Out! Unfortunately, there was a selection when you arrived, when you came in off the wagons, the dogs and all that people were lined up by the separated and the guards started saying these to the left, those to the right, those that were sent up to the right or left. I can't remember where we heard it back into the camp and settled in the work camp. And the rest were automatically taken to the crematorium. They just used to pick people, this one here and this one there. I got on the right side of the line, something or somebody. I keep thinking maybe my mother was looking after me.